incel. So an incel is short for involuntary celibate. Um, and very shortly defined, it is typically described as a man who has not been able to achieve boobs, um, a romantic or sexual relationship despite desiring one. Um, but also the emphasis here, especially in relations to incels.co, which is where I focused, it is on a man, as many of them believe that women cannot be incels because women can always achieve a sexual relationship of some kind, um, even though that perhaps isn't true. Um, so incels.co, it is an online incel forum specifically for incels, and the user base is about 10,600 last I checked, um, and it often reduces the idea of masculinity into dominating women and committing violence. And incels are the direct result of toxic masculinity, I believe, as they discourage showing emotion, they encourage being tough, aggressive, and dominant over women, and it negatively affects their own lives due to this effect of masculinity. Oh, here we go. Um, so my project, I collected 99 posts from incels.co in the discussion inceldom, which is on topic of being an incel. Um, I did this October 28, 2019, and the threads that I collected were all posted between 12 and 6, and these were all just random decisions to include some kind of way to limit what I was getting, because these guys post a lot, and I don't want to, you know, get too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I ended up sorting into four categories or themes that I felt really captured the forums and the rhetoric behind the forums. Um, so here we will see it. Um, so first is the black pill, which is their ideology that is the crux of their beliefs. Um, Insult them as an identity as they do view it as an intrinsic part of themselves, those who are posting. Um, this mental health discussion, which is very, very prevalent within the forums, as well as this um, other category called pure misogyny, which is just the way that they treat women very badly in their writing. Um, so starting with the black pill. So what is the black pill? Um, the black pill is an ideology. It is one that is very deterministic and nihilistic. And it is described by Natalie Wynn, an online essayist, is the realization that one's place in the sexual marketplace is genetically determined, that one, one is a permanent virgin, that sex and relationships are forever out of reach, and hence that happiness is impossible and there's nothing one can do except lie down and rot. It's um. very cheerful. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, the black pill is very important to them because they believe that it is a way that shows that they have no chance in the world. And so I found that it actually very closely relates to this idea of the psychic armor of manhood um, described by Martha Kaufman, which we see is the lack of ability to emotionally level with others. And this happens often within the forums, especially in discussion to the black pill. Um, oftentimes they will throw the black pill at each other's faces and make fun of each other, despite it meant to be forums for camaraderie. Um, and often shows that they cannot level with each other emotionally or and it also, we also see their dampened ability to, to feel emotion. Um, and they often encourage self-destructive behavior. And the black pill also grants many further emotional safe space from society, because as incels, they have taken the black pill. They understand the world better than anyone else, especially better than normies or chads who are the alpha men, or the Stacys who are the counterparts to the alpha men. Um, and so we see this kind of forming. And it especially is important to their identity as incels. So incel, what is like an incel? What does it mean? Um, we see a huge emphasis on this low effort lifestyle. For example, we see this here, where some telltale incel food and drinks. It isn't just enough to happen to be an incel, but it affects every part of their life, including what they eat. Um, we see a lot of low effort foods like microwave dinners, chicken tenders, um, ramen, like instant ramen, canned food. Um, a lot of this low effort, and these meals that don't require effort and they don't want to put effort into themselves but we also see them utilizing this identity to never improve. Um, one thread will have um, uh, the tag incel trait, which will describe never living a, as a like, way to engage in pleasure, only living above the base amount of comfort. They don't allow themselves to live happy, fulfilling lives because due to the black pill, they don't believe they are deserving of it, but it also allows them to never actually actively improve themselves. Why improve yourself if it doesn't mean anything? Why go out and get a haircut or shower more often if they're not gonna get a girlfriend? Um, and then with the incel identity, we also see um, how important the body is to them. For example, the skull stru structure. Um, incels believe that if you have a strong jawline as a man, as well as prominent brows, that you are more likely to be a chad, which if they physically distinguishes you from being an incel who have the weaker jaws, the less prominent brows, maybe thinner wrists, more feminine bodies. Um, and Natalie Wynn actually views that this is very important to them because it's also another unchangeable aspect. Um, that you can't really change your skull and therefore it's another thing that you can say, it's out of my hands, I'm just gonna be this way forever. 
Um, and though there is some change in that in some regards, as some incels actually have gone and gotten plastic surgery to become more masculine looking, um, there's one surgeon who will give them stronger jaw lines, but this isn't a financially feasible option for many of them, and it isn't really giving much for many of them, so the, we don't really see many options other than for incels to accept themselves and lie down and rot, as we saw with the black film. Um, so what I found within this aspect is that we see the trend where incels are painting themselves as living low for lifestyles, and because of that, they're also tortured human beings, but also they're unable to change or improve because they're so tortured. Well, again, why improve if it doesn't do anything? And this ties in very heavily with the discussion of mental health. Um, and it, just as a disclaimer, I'm not diagnosing any of the users, but the only time I would ever say that they have depression or anything like that is if they claim to directly. Otherwise, I'm just drawing comparisons to like them exhibiting these kind of symptoms. Um, but first, um, as a general note, we do, see, we do know that there's a link with toxic masculinity, such as risk-taking, being violent, having power over women, and that necessary need for control and how it negatively affects men. We do see that link with issues within mental health with men. And we do see that in the forums. Um, for example, we often see a lot of references to an encouragement of suicide ideation within the posts. Um, there isn't really a lot of help and for each other, and it is an ultimately a very unsafe space for these mentally ill and possibly suicidal people who are posting. For example, we do actually see the tag suicide fuel as a common tag. Um, and so it's not an encouraging tag at all. And we have an example here. Um, for example, suicide fuel, you're living this pitiful existence because two people had sex. You're in constant pain every day of your life because two normies decided to have sex. This is throwing it to their face that they can't have sex, but they're still living this tortured lifestyle because other people did, and now they have to face the consequences. And so it's throwing it in their face, and it's making them like be pushed to this idea of suicide. And further, we see this idea, serious, what's stopping you from roping? It's asking, what's stopping you from committing suicide? It treats suicide not as something like that maybe they all feel, but something that they definitely all feel, as an intrinsic part of being an incel. Of course you want to commit suicide. You cannot get a girlfriend. And thus, what's stopping you? And it's not an uplifting thread. They're not answers like, oh, I got a job. I'm living a really good life. Instead, it's like, oh, I have people in my life who are preventing me at this time, but one day. So they view suicide as a, a very, it's going to be there. They view it as something that will happen, just not yet. And that is another way out, as soon as they might see it. So now they have two options. They can either lay down and rot and accept their fate, or they can commit suicide, neither of which of the options are appearing very good. As we see, like, this isn't a safe space. Incels.co, in their introduction to the website, actually claims we are a safe space for incels. This is not true. A space that is encouraging a suicidal ideation and does not offer any resources for its user base who are consistently exhibiting these features is not a safe space. It is inherently unsafe. And this is only allowing the issues to worsen and grow, and we will see these issues get worse. And with that, we see the discussion of misogyny. Um, so what I found here was actually this flipped narrative of victimization, um, similar to this idea of feminazi and male basher, as discussed by Jackson Chaps with that flipped narrative. Um, when he discusses that, he says those terms, feminazi and male basher, are used to make women who call out men who beat women or hurt women, and they use those terms to make women the villains in the story, despite the men being the ones causing the pain and the issues. And we see that here with um, incels when they discuss women. So these terms like stasis or sluts, sometimes baggies for women they don't view as attractive. Sometimes they'll use the word femoid, which is incredibly dehumanizing and meant only to harm them. So we see this dehumanization and villainization of women, as well as this fantasized sexual violence as retribution against women for denying them the sexual relationships. Um, so we see that again with the word stasis or sluts. Um, for example, here we see women are so out of reach for incels, they may as well be a different species. Just effing laugh at the cucks who say women are people too. Here they are implying that if you think a woman is a person, you are less than a man than even the people at the incel forums. That if you think a woman is human, then you are even less of a man than those who frequent incels.co. And it dehumanizes them because they don't believe women are people. But we know that isn't true. Women are obviously people. <laughs> like, I am a human person here today. Um, and then opposite of suicide fuel, we also see the term life fuel. Um, this one states, even the sexiest Stacy will be ugly as F one day, implying that women are their bodies and women are their sexuality, 
that women's only power is their ability to gain a sexual partner. And even the sexiest face, you should lose that power one day. And therefore, that's uplifting. And that's something that they can look forward to. It should give, be worth giving them life. And so we see them reducing women to something less than human. So what does this do? This ends up creating a narrative of a heroic struggle against the evil women, the evil femoids that dare deny them any kind of sexual relationship. They push the blame from themselves to the women for denying them. It's not their fault for not being appealing or having awful personalities. It's the women's fault for saying no. And it also ends up encouraging violence and hatred coming up. So what does all of this mean? The incel forms are a pressure cooker for incels and their identities. It boils them down to an idea of what a man is, and that harms everyone involved. The incel forms are not good for incels, and they are certainly not good for those around incels. So because of that, it is an issue that needs to be addressed, because the pressure is building and we need to do something, or the problem will only get worse. So what can we do? We have to work on an individual level, because we cannot tackle the forms alone. It's very impossible. There are 10,000 user guides. Um, so for our young boys, we must encourage independent thought, critical engagement, and empathy. Um, otherwise, we will not allow them to become careful, thoughtful men that we need them to be. And we must allow them to fall outside their these rigid structures of masculinity so that they can know that it's okay to be a man who isn't like all the other men, to be a man who cries, to be a man with a weak jawline with thin wrists. It's okay. And for our men, we must have our men stand up and challenge other men to exhibit these kind of harmful ideals. Because people like incels will not listen to women. They already show that they do not respect us. And so we need men to be able to stand up and consistently challenge the other men exhibiting these ideas. Um, and we should be challenging every day too, but just knowing that we can stand up to this will help turn the tide of the, this cultural ideal. And that's what we can do, and I hope that this will help change the course of where insults are going.